Welcome to another episode of the Becoming Conscious podcast. Today, I have a really interesting one. I'm going to be riffing on strategy, and we're going to be talking about how strategy isn't this lifeless thing, but actually, if you feel stuck in life, likely the thing that you're missing is strategy, because strategy is the essence of being proactive and moving towards the things that are meaningful towards you. And so to start it off, why is strategy important? Uh, Essentially, the point that I'll be making here is that strategy is the thing that not only creates the long-term vision for your life, but also helps you move towards it and track whether you're moving towards it and why you may or may not be moving towards it. And strategy is the thing that helps us avoid getting distracted by social media, by getting distracted by the millions of things that life throws our way. When we have a crystal clear strategy, what we're supposed to be doing in each moment of our lives becomes really clear. And that's what we'll be talking about today. And so the essence here is that strategy is often a word that gets confused with business, career, and for good reason, you know, to strategize around your career is a very good thing to do. It is how you build financial stability and it's how you move towards a life that you want. But what I want to be bringing up here is that strategy is more than just career development. You can strategize around emotional development, ethical development, spiritual development, and deepening relationships. And actually, it's not antithetical to these things. A lot of times we see strategizing as this rational, concrete thing, and therefore we relate it to rational, concrete domains but this is not necessarily the case, right? I can strategize around how to implement various containers and contexts in my life that deepen my emotional intelligence. I can strategize around how to build a life that increases my ethical awareness by allowing me to dialogue with people with diverse perspectives, much different than the ones that I hold. I can strategize around how to deepen into spiritual growth. I can strategize around how I can shape my life in a way that makes possible me being able to put myself into conditions of no escape for the ego, such as Sashin's uh, meditation retreats and being able to do weekly sits. I can strategize around my relationship, around what are the ways that I can install the character traits and the qualities that I want to show up as and the strategy helping me see the ways in which I'm not currently showing up in those ways and helping me figure out what it takes to to start showing up in those ways. So you can see that the point here is that strategy encompasses and enriches all aspects of our life, not just career development. And so another point that I want to make here is that one of the biggest things that's stopping us from fully stepping into confronting our fears is lack of strategy. When we have a crystal clear strategy and we have a vision that maps with that strategy, then if there's a fear that we must confront, if we can map it on to why it's meaningful to confront that fear, the problem that we're overcoming in our life and the dozens of things that we've already done to face the challenges around that problem, then we'll be more likely to confront the fear. And the more that we confront the fear, the more that there's a reciprocal opening process that will happen and that we'll be able to confront more fears in the future. And so the question here is, what is the smallest possible fear that I can confront? And so, again, I just want to hit this point home that strategy is not heartless. A lot of times I perceive in myself, I've had this assumption and i imagine this bias is true writ large for many people it's that there's this association of strategy as being this lifeless rational cold thing that is only done by businessmen or business people Um, but what i want to say here is that we can actually and like some people do use strategy in that way some people genuinely use strategy in a heartless way in order to you know, do military strategy and figure out how to do awful things or, or people want to scam someone and they find a strategy for how to do that. And it turns into kind of a money-making crypto scheme, but it can also be guided by love. 
that if we hold truth, beauty, and goodness as the orienting factors of our life, then strategy can actually be in service of those, right? If we start with strategy and then let the other values lag behind, then it's most likely not going to be in service of the good. But if we get very clear on what we want out of life and we strategize around that, the well, clear around what we want that if that thing is the true, the good, and the beautiful, then any of the strategies that we create will be in service of that love and will actually be motivated by it. It will not only be coming from that place, but also going towards a deepening of that. And so the more that we can incorporate love into strategy, the more meaningful our actions become. And like I said, the more strategic we become, the more focused we become because strategy is a forcing function against distraction. It is the more strategic we become and the more that we align with that strategy in our life, the more we will see how being distracted is not getting us towards the materialization and actualization of that strategy in the pain of that will become so unbearable that eventually we'll find a way to just create strategies and actually implement them because that is the most fulfilling thing to do. And so what I want to talk about here is that what does it look like to strategize like this? You know, I will give an example in my life. Uh, a few years back, I felt very socially anxious and I just felt like very afraid of people. And so I implicitly, now, now the strategizing that I'm doing is much more explicit, but in the moment there was this implicit strategizing of like, how do I become more social? How do I confront these fears? And one of the things I've been sitting with, concepts I've been sitting with recently is conditions of no escape. Right. If you look at a Zen monastery, it is essentially saying that we are going to create a condition where there's no escape and that the only possible way that you can develop is towards spiritual development. But this doesn't have to be just a spiritual thing. Right. When I was traveling, what I ended up doing without even realizing that I was doing it was I created a condition of no escape for myself where social development was the only possible answer because lack of social development was more painful than the pain of going through that process. That condition of no escape was going to a foreign country, went to Mexico uh, or Costa Rica first with like solo. I went by myself. I had no plans and I showed up in a hostel. I had to figure it out, which meant I had to figure out how to communicate and go buy a bus ticket in a language I didn't know. And then I had to communicate and then I hung out with people in the hostels and I was basically forcing myself to confront the fears of social anxiety through that condition. If I would have stayed in my previous living situation, I didn't have enough of that condition of no escape as a forcing function towards development that nothing would have happened. Right. And so my point here is that we can actually create these conditions of no escape intentionally for ourselves and all the different aspects of our life that we want to confront. So whether it's our emotional development we can put ourselves in situations where emotional development is the only possible option. We can put ourselves in intellectual or ethical developmental constraints, or we can put ourselves in situations where, you know, like for this podcast, once a guest shows up on zoom, the only possible thing is to engage in the most intellectually rigorous way that I possibly can because to not do that feels more dissatisfying and therefore it is a condition of no escape for intellectual development, but this can look many different ways. Um, maybe like a book club is a condition of no escape for developing knowledge of a book and in intellectual development. You can do this in relational development. Um, you can create a condition where dishonesty is so painful that the only option is to develop more integrity and emotional communicative capacities, um, but for ethical as well. Like something around ethical is the more that I can understand others, the more that I can take into account their perspectives and act more ethically. And therefore 
to put myself in situations where I am having conversations with people that have radically different perspectives than my own. This is a condition of no escape or ethical development. So you can see how thinking about conditions of no escape relates to strategizing around our lives because it's seeing that we are not the only, it's, it's honoring that individualism is not the only perspective that's true. And that if I thought the only way to develop myself was to do it all on my own, which sometimes comes with the assumption or strategizing has that assumption that when I create a strategy, I have to do all of it. Whereas sometimes the strategy is what situations can I put myself in such that the support of other people in the container forces me to develop in a way they could not have done on my own. And so these are some of the core ideas that I wanted to riff on around strategy. Um, I just have this deep sense these days that strategy is something that's really important that everyone can benefit from. And I was listening to something recently and essentially the point was that life is suffering. There's inherent pain and suffering every single aspect of our day. And that the most meaningful thing to do is to pick up as much of that suffering as we possibly can and to create strategy and figure out what the problem is and figure out a strategy around the steps we need to take in order to solve it and then to do those things. That just really landed with me. And as I'm trying my best to enact that, I'm already noticing how meaningful it feels to pick up more and more suffering <laughs> intentionally. Uh, so I really hope you appreciated this little rant on strategizing. Thank you for listening.